Good morning. Good morning, good morning, morning. I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman, U.S. Senate GOP primary candidate in the state of Alabama. Vote for me, March 3rd. Welcome. Hello, Jim. Hello, Bob. Hello, Karen. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Jessica. Welcome. Come on in. Everybody, so today we are going to talk about how to, a how-to guide, how to take action, how to behave in a world amidst we live where the press is always trying to program you. I'm going to talk about how you should behave to resist the press programming of your mind. But first, everybody, it's the morning. We need to wake up. Let's get the coffee in our cup and let's do a citation to the simultaneous libation of Scott Adams. Cheers. Mmm. Ah, my wife's cappuccino. My wife's cappuccino. Okay. So, every day, we are bombarded with bad information. Okay, this is a tactic of the press. All they, they, they consistently manufacture an article from a viewpoint that they want you to take, and they just bombard you recursively over and over and over and over and over with this manufactured story or this lie in an attempt to reprogram your brain to believe this. That's what they're doing. So how do you survive in this environment? Right now we live in a world where there's lots of uncertainty, there's lots of chaos. It's very, very difficult now to understand what is truth. It's very, very difficult to be able to see the data because none of the press people incorporate the data. And a lot of people are not inclined to looking at data in the first place. So how do you survive in a world with all this uncertainty? We live in a world where pictures lie. I can take a picture and manufacture a picture perfectly, if I want to spend enough time, perfectly envisioning a scenario, a lieful scenario or a deceitful scenario, you can imagine some dirty picture. I could do that. I could take somebody's face, transplant it onto a picture and lie and post a picture and say, look at this. This is photographic evidence of XYZ. I could do that. I have the techniques, the skills to do that. And the press, that's what they do to you, to you every day is they manufacture data, they manufacture stories, and they try to reprogram you. So we live in a world where pictures lie. Not only do pictures lie, but movies lie. So nowadays when you see a movie on a camera or a camera phone or a cell phone or something, that it's also possible that that could be faked. Okay, so we live in a world where I remember there was there was I can't remember the context. It was either at the Israeli border or something where they had uh, the Palestinian protesters and they made fake movies. So they they actually like wrote a script and like made a fake movie that was surmising that the Israeli border guards were like killing and injuring Palestinian uh what do you call protesters? And they literally just made up this story, wrote a script, and then filmed a movie to make you believe this lie, okay? So we live in a world where not only pictures lie, but movies lie. And not only that, but somebody, movies can be completely manipulated. So nowadays, there's a program called DeepFake. DeepFake is a computer algorithm that can take, it just takes, all it takes is one image. It can take one snapshot image of somebody, and it can reprogram a whole movie to basically talk in the text that you type in. So you can reprogram people to be saying things in, in movies now. Okay, we live in a world where in the new Star Wars movies, they are recreating actors who are already dead, like how they looked 30 years ago, and you can't even tell the difference. Or if you do, you're looking very, very, very closely. Okay, so we live in a world where we can no longer trust pictures, we can no longer trust movies. How do you operate in a world where this information is constantly bombarded at you. We also live in a world of clickbait headlines. So we live in a world where every headline is not designed to give you truth. Every headline is only designed for the very, very specific purpose to catch your eye first and to second to draw you in with a click to the story. That's how headlines are written. They are inherently written basically as lies. And if you go in and you click on a story based on the headline and you actually read through the actual story, you'll find nine times out of ten that that headline is inaccurate or embellished. Okay, So we live in a world where the press is constantly trying to lie to you. It's frustrating. <clears throat> So I want to postulate the question and try to help you guys. How do you navigate in this world? 
And let me just talk a little bit about my experience because I get paid to operate in worlds like this because I'm a scientist. So as a scientist, you are operating on the cusp of what's known. So if you can imagine a circle, imagine a circle that encompasses all of what humanity knows. A scientist's job is to operate right there at the edge. And his job is to just push that circle just a little bit out, just a little bit, learning some new little fact. That is the job of a scientist. So you're always operating on the border of what is known and what is unknown, okay? So I am always operating in an environment of chaos and uncertainty where the data is uncertain and you always have to try to make the best choices and the best strategies in a realm of unpredictability and in a realm where you don't necessarily know precisely what is true. So how do you operate in that world? I'm gonna outline some principles that help me that should help you navigate the world that we live in. So the first one is, and this should be obvious, but it's not, it's self-reliance, okay? Understand that what you think, the thoughts in your own head are much, much more valuable and much more likely to be inherently true than what you're being programmed with, okay? You need to have self-reliance. You need to assume and you need to try to trust your own instincts but not just trust your instincts, follow up with experimentation, okay? So you're either a part of the herd or you're an independent thinker. You're either being programmed or you're thinking for yourself, okay? Innate self-reliance, reliance on your own thoughts and reliance on your own intelligence protects you from the influence of others. So if you are the person and you've just decided in your head, you maybe you write down every morning, I will only rely on my own thoughts today. If you write that down, that will build a protective structure around your brain that will make it very, very difficult for the media to reprogram you. Okay, there's, a, there's an old proverb I don't know, it's probably amidst many, many different cultures, but nothing is free, there's no free lunch. You should resist, in a sense, you should resist gifts. And when somebody gives you a pre-written story, that in a sense is a gift of information. And you should, sort of, the self-reliance attitude is to resist gifts because you always know there's a catch. And the catch of them giving you that gift of information is that they are trying to reprogram you. Resist gifts, self-reliance, okay? So, how do you actually implement self-reliance in terms of information, okay? How do you implement that? Because everybody, all you people listening, probably have always for your entire life relied on information from other people. How would you even approach the world in a sense of how would you actually begin to start generating your own information and your own thoughts? How do you do that? The first thing you need to do is you need to also start emphasizing empirical Testing. So empiricism is this, it's a, it's a philosophical system where you derive information from experiments, okay? So you say, well, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. This is what I think it is. And you formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is something that you think is true, but you're not quite sure. So you formulate a hypothesis, and then you say, well, how could I test this? How could I test this hypothesis? And you envision or you imagine an experimental system, and then you do a test and you look for the answer. And if you do enough tests, enough answers should sort of point you in the right direction towards truth, okay? That is empiricism. You need to start relying on your own experiments and your own thoughts, your own empirical experiments to determine what is true, okay? That's the only way to navigate in systems of uncertainty is 100% empiricism. Okay, another good strategy that you should be using to become self-reliant and to have independent thoughts, and this is, again, this might be seem obvious, but nobody does this, is to journal, okay? You need to get, you need to get a notebook, you need to get a notebook, and every night, you need to think about, well, what am I thinking about? Like, what am I really wondering about truth? What am I, what are the questions that I'm attacking? And you need to write that question at the top of the page. And then each day you need to start writing your own thoughts. If you write it with your hand, that usually means it's, com it's coming from inside your own brain. And you need to follow up questions with your own thoughts, your own hypotheses, okay? So that's how you actually formulate ideas for experiments to do empirical, 
uh, experimental test. And that's how you formulate hypotheses is you have to journal. Okay. So actually get a journal, go out, buy a journal, put it down and start journaling about things that you think that is how to become self-reliant on your own brain. So let me give an example of this. You are bombarded by the Democrats every day with a the theme that Trump's tax policy has only helped the top 1%. Trump's tax, they, that's their talking point, is every one of the Democrats says, well, Trump marketed this as a tax policy that would help the, that would help the poor and help the middle class, but it hasn't helped them. It's only helped the top 1%. So empirical information, let me give you an example of this. In my experience, I have five kids, okay? And as soon as Trump passed that tax policy plan, okay, he put in there a policy for increased child tax credit. And I got back probably double what I was getting back before because of the increased child tax credit. And I am in the middle class. My, my salary puts me within the middle class. So when people tell to me, when people say to me, well, Trump's tax policy, it only helped, it only helped the top 1%. No, because I empirically know that in my own experience, my return that I got back doubled basically because of that child tax credit increase, okay? So I know from my own information, my own experience, my own em empirical testing, it was sort of a test in the sense that you test before and after the Trump tax cuts, look at the actual taxes that you got back. Mine increased, okay? So when somebody tells me Trump's tax credits only helped the top 1%, I basically say, okay, that's BS because it actually helped me, okay? Another tactic that can help prevent you from being programmed is isolation from the mainstream media, okay? You need to stop watching TV. You need to stop basically reading articles that you know their only goal is to reprogram you. You need to favor people who are basically have no, you need to favor people who aren't trying to program you. And you need to favor people who have long format discussions, okay? If you're actually, if you must go to the press to find your information, favor long form discussion formats as a means to get information. Because every time somebody just goes on a talk show for 45 seconds, they're just giving you a sound bite. And all they're trying to do is generate controversy because they want more attention because the only the only thing that's important right now for politicians is to get attention okay so you need to favor long form media outlets where they have long discussions and you need to favor here's the way you can favor empirical discovery of knowledge is go around and talk to your neighbors go around and talk to the people that you work with talk to the people who are your friends have actual conversations and favor the information that you get from actual conversations with real people instead of favoring the information you get from the mainstream media okay favor conversations as a means of data acquisition with the average day-to-day -day Joe, average Joe, okay? Another thing you need to know is you need to reprogram your brain to be skeptical, okay? Like I said, we live in a world where everything now can and is being faked. And we live in a world where everybody is is fighting as hard as they can. They're fighting to the death for the, your eyes. They want your eyes to be looking at their stuff and they will lie, cheat, and steal to give to get your attention, to get your eyes. So you need to reprogram your brain to be skeptical. You need to reprogram your brain so that the first thing you think when you open up a new internet page or you open up a uh, TV and you're gonna, you're gonna click in a new channel, the first thing you need to think is assume straight out these people are not telling me the truth. And I'm gonna, it's my job now to try to figure out what is the truth here, okay? You need to be skeptical. You also need to be open to contradiction. One of the problems of our society is everybody thinks, everybody thinks that they have all the power to get all the truth and they think that they're right. They think that they're 100% right and there isn't somehow this gray area, okay? You need to be open to contradiction. If you are gonna survive on the boundary of what is known and what's unknown, okay? As a scientist, like I said, that's right where I operate and if you are ever gonna survive in that environment, you have to be open to contradictions and that means like you don't necessarily, you reserve your judgment. You say, well, I'm not quite sure yet. I need more data. I need, I'm not going to make up my mind yet because I need more data. You need to reserve your judgment, okay? You need to formulate better or more refined or alternative hypotheses. And sometimes you might have a couple hypotheses. Sometimes you might think, well, I don't quite know the answer yet, but it could be this or it could be this or it could be this or it could be this. And I'm going to hold these four 
hypotheses, then maybe they're mutually exclusive. Maybe if this one is true, this one can't possibly be true, okay? But you hold these in a state of suspended animation and you say, well, one of these might be true, so I'm gonna kind of reserve my judgment and I'm not gonna make a decision yet until I know that there's enough significant data to exclude one or the others, okay? And you don't exclude this hypothesis just because of one piece of data. So I'm gonna talk about this next very, very important point, which is called convergence. You only know something is true by seeing multiple independent different things pointing to that same piece of truth, okay? So in science, when you ask a question, you might say, here's my hypothesis, here's my experiment, and then I'm gonna do my experiment and I'm gonna get a yes or no answer, okay? So you do your experiment and say you get a yes. Do you conclude yet that your hypothesis is true because you got one yes? No, you don't conclude yet because that's not enough data. What you need to do now is you need to ask that same question in different mechanisms. You need to say, okay, well that was a good experiment because that worked, that gave me an answer, so that was good. Now let's try to do a different experiment and see if I get the same answer. So then you do a different experiment, a second experiment, or a third experiment, and then you see what's the answer. Is it yes or is it no? And then by the time you've done three different, completely different experiments, and all three of those tell you yes, then you can say, well, my hypothesis is probably true because I've done three different experiments. They all told me the same answer. That is convergence, okay? So you need to seek convergence. Now, this is why the mainstream media is so dangerous right now is because they are manipulating a human's innate ability to seek convergence. So what they do is they say, well, do you believe this postulate, which is in my headline? And if your first answer is no, then they reformulate that same postulate as a second made up story. And they just keep pinging you with made up story after made up story after made up story after made up story after made up story. And then they tell you, well, if there's smoke, there's fire. Okay, so then they're trying, they're literally trying to manipulate your ability to seek convergence by concocting many, many, many different iterations of lies. But you, but what you need to understand is that if somebody gives you 10 lies, okay, and then they say, well, one of these must, one of these must, must support this hypothesis, okay? No, zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero does not equal one, it equals zero. A lie plus a lie plus a lie plus a lie does not equal truth, okay? So they're manipulating your ability to seek convergence. This actually was, this actually literally was a tactic from Hitler, where Hitler said, literally, if you just repeat a lie enough times in the media, it becomes truth, people believe it. That is a quote from the devil himself, okay? So that's what they're trying to do, is they are trying to manipulate your ability to think independently and manipulate and coerce your ability to seek convergence by concocting story after story after story after story, which is all composed of lies. And if you look and actually read those stories, you'll see there's no data actually supporting this claim. It's a zero, okay? So just know that zero plus zero plus zero plus zero still equals zero. It does not equal in conclusion. Where there's smoke, there is not fire. That's the world in which we live right now. Okay, one last final thing that you can do is connect with people who are smart and who are willing to have conversations with you, okay? You need to, you need to first favor your own thoughts, but then once you have your own thoughts, you can go talk to other people about your thought and you say, hey, I thought, I wonder about, I was wondering if this is true or not. And you go to the person who you think is the smartest person you know and you say, what do you think about this? And then you see kind of like where your holes are. You look for the holes in your own thought and you look for the holes in their thought, okay? And then you can kind of see through convergence of independent thoughts who's got the best idea, okay? So that's another tactic. So that's kind of the premise where I, what, this whole, what this whole movie was about was me giving you techniques that you can use to navigate a world of uncertainty, navigate a world where you don't know what's true. So I'll quick go through and I'll review what they were. How to navigate. You need self-reliance. You need to rely on your own thoughts. You need to have the philosophy that your own thoughts are more valuable than other people's. To generate your own thoughts, you need to journal. You need to go buy a notebook and you need to start writing down what you think is true, okay? That is how you generate your own thoughts. And once you write that down, that programs your brain, your own brain with your own thoughts, not somebody else's thoughts. Then you need to empirically test your own ideas. You need to set up an experiment. You say, how can I figure out if this is true? Or what in my own personal knowledge, what in my own personal knowledge is concluding that this thought that I had was either true or not true. You need to seek convergence. You need to look to ask the question in many, many different ways. 
And then when you get the answer, when you get enough answers saying, yes, this is the correct answer, then you, only then can you favor that answer. And you need to reserve your judgment of your hypotheses of which is true until, until you've sought enough convergence and found enough good data that supports that conclusion. Okay, and you need to favor conversations. You need to isolate yourself from the mainstream media and you need to start having personal conversations with actual people. Okay, that is the end. So if you like the videos, now you know how to navigate a world of uncertainty. Bam, boom. Uh, if you like the videos, you can follow me at eaglewolfpack.com. You can go to my Twitter handle, eaglewolfpack. Uh, you can click, you can share, you can comment and subscribe if you like the videos. And have a good day. End.